So, um, wow, I start right there with a so ums. Right? <laughs> hey, remember, this is a tech garage. We're not sounding professional here. That is correct. Right. I'm Matt, and this is Zach. And you might know us from the Tech Garage, which we did for a period of about six years. There's about 50 episodes of the Tech Garage podcast. Yeah, this give or take. This is our first actual Tech Garage video that's going to actually end up on the internet. I think we recorded a few at some point. Yeah, that sounds about right. And they never actually made it anywhere. I have no idea yes. how that happened. I have no idea. We're not casting blame here at all. That's we're good. just we're just going to make this one happen. So, this is the actual garage in Zach's house where we did all the tech garage stuff. There's even a little bit of green green screen over here from old other previous video projects. Yeah, if you guys want to do it, you can do anywhere. a quick uh, quick uh, intro of the garage. So this is the first green screen wall we built. Yeah, and I don't know After Effects at all, so there's not going to be any effects that get added into this with this green screen for this video. Yep. Maybe someday later. So there's this green screen. This was for a video series that Matt and I did maybe two episodes of that we didn't lo upload. These up here are my homemade sound dampeners to kind of kill some of the uh, sound bounce in the garage. Got a few extra ones here that need to be hung up. Here I've got some uh, just can yep. lights in the garage. I got <laughs> two lights. there. Industrial can lights. I've got two up here and I've got two in the back. These are mostly from my setup called uh, Zach Lifts. You can see that on YouTube. There's a couple of those all uploaded. Right. We'll put a link out to that. Yep. And there is, you can see all of the Zach Lifts equipment in here, yep. the, the, the rack, everything there. And then this blue slash green screen here yep. that this you're is, using uh, for. This is my newest addition as of like yesterday. This is a C-stand that's holding a blue screen uh, to replace my old blue screen or green screen, which is right here. I had this guy, he was hung up to this uh, bar. Right. But I'm gonna start working out again and it's a pain in the ass to hang this up every morning after I move desks because right. we're doing everything in this room now. Right, as we're talking about this, there's gonna be a little drone flyover happening. So people, yeah. you're seeing an outside picture of what Zach's house looks like. It's a nice house, it's out in the country. There's lots of room around here. You can see there's a Tesla parked in the garage there. There's an F-350 park there. You got lots of space. Lots and lots of lots space. Lots of space, lots of room. You can do what you want. Yep. Um, how long have you been here now? Uh, about 10 years. About 10, yeah, that's, that seems about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think this entire 10 years that you've been here, and this being the tech garage, yep. where we do tech stuff and we would upload podcasts yep. from here, there was one big drawback. Yep, biggest drawback of here was our internet story. Right. So when we first moved in, we had satellite internet, which had bandwidth caps and right. a second and a half latency. Like what kind of bandwidth cap do you uh, want to 10 do? 10 gigabytes, or I think we got up to 30 gigabytes per month. And then what happens when you hit 30 gigabytes? Well, then they start charging you through the nose or they throttle you right. uh, down to less than 56K. Right. So that didn't last long. Um, after that, we went to a T1 line. So I had a service drive a T1 line out here. Right. Now, for those of you playing at home, you may be thinking, oh my God, a T1 line, that's amazing. Right, because uh, you're still thinking in 1999 terms. Right, but a T1 is like one and a half megabits per second up and yeah. down. Most cable providers out there or internet service providers give you right around 40 megabits per second for I don't know, 50 or 60 bucks, right. somewhere in there, right? After that, I said, you know what? I'm gonna get smart. Right. T-Mobile had just come out with uh, unlimited everything. And that wasn't even that long ago. No, like this, this was, was like a few years ago, right? Uh, like, probably five years ago. Okay, so you did uh, five years of just rotating through. Yeah. I remember when you had that uh, ISDN line, mm -hmm. it would like, you'd have to call them up and have them reboot it and yeah, things like that. So I would work in the uh, um, technology industry so when my internet started to get slow, I dug into what was going on, and then I'd call my ISP and say, hey ISP, I have a problem. And they'd run me through all of this stuff that you normally did when you called your ISP to complain. And eventually, after the third or fourth call, the answer was, oh, hey, are you Zach? <laughs> right. I'm like, yes, I am. And they're like, cool, we're just connecting you up to uh, like our tier three folks. So they send me to tier three folks. I'd say, hey, my internet sucks again. Um, they'd reprovision my line and everything would be clean for another 10 or 12 days. Right. And then you'd have to redo it again. Yes, and I'd yeah. have to redo it. Um, so there was that. That was fun. 
Uh, the next incarnation, though, was T-Mobile had just come out with unlimited streaming for, um, you know, $60 a month on one of their phone lines. Yeah. So I went and got a T-Mobile SIM, and I got a thing called a Mophie. Uh, it's a cellular router, basically, just like the router you have in your homes that you connect to your uh, cable modem or DSL router. Yeah. It's just like that, but instead of connecting to a DSL modem or router, it connects right to a cellular card. Right. And then you get cellular. Is that? Are you still using that or? Uh, I'm using a modified version of okay, that. Okay, okay. So, can you pull that one out of the closet? Yeah, so, I actually have one in the right. garage I can show right, you. Cool. And we can go take a look at the devices. Right. We're looking at it right now. Here's here's what it looks like. Okay, right. so what you're seeing right now is, I think it's the Mophie 4500. Um, this is um, a prosumer cellular router that's designed for uh, basically just acting like your typical home wireless router and also getting internet from the uh, cellular card. Okay. Um, now, with Just the, the exact same SIM card you'd put in your cell phone. Same SIM card you yeah. put in your phone. And with T-Mobile and their unlimited internet, what we noticed after uh, about 30 gigabytes of usage, that unlimited internet started to get throttled. Right. Um, so you're again down to, oh, I'm sorry, not throttled, didn't mean to misspeak there. Deprioritize. Right, that is right. technically what is happening. To make sure we're getting the right lingo that T-Mobile uses. Right. T-Mobile yes. has just taken your traffic and made it the absolute lowest priority. Right. So I did what every normal human would do in this situation. I went out and bought three more t or two more T-Mobile cards. Right. And I used one until it was used up. Right. Then I would set it down. I would put the next one in and repeat right. and just so cycle through Netflix all three cards. So when Netflix stops working, you basically swap in a new card Yep. and you keep them in order so you knew which ones worked right. and then just rotate through them. Correct. And, yep. uh, so my wife is working on, she has one of these for work, she was working on hers, I was working on this one, and I, I started to find myself going, wait a minute, there's got to be a better solution here. So what I started to think about is... Is my internet slow because cellular internet is just slow? Or is my internet slow because I don't have a good connection to the cellular uh, channels? Right. Uh, so I went and spent a little more money. I bought a massive cellular antenna okay. and hooked the cellular antenna up to uh, my Mophie, okay. aimed it at a tower, okay. and did some speed tests. Okay. Can we go look at that antenna? Let's go is look at the outside? antenna. All right. Ooh, all right. All right. So what do we got here? This is very, this is a high tech setup. Yeah. This is so, um, let's legit. Let's start with the uh, exciting bit. Well, let's start with the bottom. The bottom, okay. Is that a sawhorse? Yeah, so I pulled a sawhorse out of the garage. Right. Uh, because I needed something to test on. Yeah. Now, uh, when I first put, installed this, my plan was to throw it on the sawhorse, uh, use the cellular router's uh, signal meter, and then just kind of turn the the uh antenna right. until i got it uh into a good spot and so that's what i did okay uh and i found that aiming it westish right gave me the best signal and well i've also got two kids like i said they right. run around and do uh kid stuff right so i needed to make this a little bit harder to move how much weight do you have on that right now okay. those are those are sandbags yeah these are sandbags full of gravel right this is i don't know what is that about 45 pounds uh yeah, it feels like about 45 pounds. That, that arm, my arm's a little broken right now, so that too much hurt. That hurt. Uh, so I've got about 200 pounds of gravel okay. holding this down. To make sure it doesn't blow around. Yeah, make sure if it something. slams into it, right. they uh, just bounce off. Of okay. It. And then the antenna, which looks like it's designed to be mounted Correct. on a structure. I've got an antenna mount here that uh, okay. eventually will mount to the house. Right. Uh, I've got the actual antennas themselves. So do those, co so, okay, so let's talk about the antennas. There's two of them. Yep. Running into some sort of coaxial cable, yep. it looks like. Exactly. Uh, does, it, does it come in a pair? Do they, yes. like, they come so, in a pair? Uh, I don't remember the name of the site, but I found a website. I bought this all as a kit. So I bought the two antennas, the all of the different adapters that I needed, um, some uh, surge protectors in case it gets struck by lightning. Right. We'll uh, include a link and, to that yeah, site also, as well as these uh, in the in the video yep. description, so you can you can find these on your own. Funny story when I bought this. So uh, I don't know a lot about antennas, right? I was on like a uh, you know you know Coppola, our friend, our buddy, yeah, right? yeah. I was on a website that would make him like super excited because it was like 
nerdy as hell. Right. A lot of radio. Yeah, equipment. a lot of radio jargon. Like, do you know what these connectors are called? Uh, are yeah, fuck, like, I don't know either. I, uh, I, 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 if I heard the name, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what those are called. It's an Arctic 47. Right. Or like but they're something. the little twist one, twist yeah. lock ones. Yeah. Well, these are a special kind of the twist lock ones. Oh, uh, but they like twist. It's only like yeah. a 90 degree twist, right? Uh, yeah. These ones just rotate around and screw on. There's okay. little screws oh, okay. in there. So, but like, uh, uh, I was like, okay, I'm just going to order the base kit. Blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. I don't know if I'm getting the right thing. So I, I had to spend like 20 minutes figuring out what are the different adapter connections on the router. Right. Uh, so I ordered the right thing because there was like these and the cable and then different adapter options to make sure they all went together. Okay. So I was, when I opened up the box, I was looking at the cable. I'm like, okay, that cable's too big uh, for my router. I had uh, each of these came with the. Uh, you know, this little bracket enclosure, yeah. two things of wire. And, you know, these were all packaged in one unit. These were packaged in another unit. Um, and I opened it up and I started going through and I couldn't find the little adapters okay. that were going to connect to the router. And I was like, man, did I forget to order those? Like, did I do this wrong? Um, it turns out what I thought were two complete units were actually just like, let's put this in a box, let's put that in a box, throw a bunch of the, the adapters in this bag, chuck that bag in there. So two bags that looked identical with like cable and whatnot in them actually had different stuff in them. Turns out I did do it right. Um, but yeah, so let's talk a little more. We've got, okay. here's the antenna. Here's oh, there's the, more stuff over on the corner? Well, th this is the really classic cornhole. right here. It looks like yeah. cornhole. It looks like yeah, Amazon that, that cornhole. Is, that is Amazon Basics cornhole. So okay. these are my cables. I ran these all the way into my house. Okay. I yeah. see you um, used the... Um, I went with a very classic uh, hill building oh, method this here. This is, okay. The I, towel in the window. I ran it through the uh, window right. because my router's right in there. Okay. Uh, but then I slid the window down so I didn't get any bugs or anything, and I packed it with towels. Uh, Not a bad idea. Uh, and I was content with that. Okay. Uh, my buddy Andreas was over drinking uh, one night. Or, yeah, one night. He noticed this setup. And he was flabbergasted at my lack of security because I just left my window open. Uh, now, right. To be but... fair, this window's a little busted and it's a pain in the ass to get open. Okay. So I figured it was fine. But he went and added uh, security bars okay. to my window so nobody could right. get in. So long term, though, you're going to mount this the yeah. antenna up on the house and you'll drill a hole through the wall. Correct. Long term, and... I'll mount it probably up here somewhere yeah. um, on that face of the house and aim it in that direction. Do you think you, like, when you play, I assume you were playing around with the, did you find if, like, right now... Let me let me take another yep. shot of this. The antenna is pretty close to the house. It is very close to the house. Do you think if it's like either like out in the open a little more or mounted up above, you'll get a better signal? My expectation is that when we put this higher and there's less junk in the way, right? Right. Um, my internet will get faster. Okay. Cool. Um, what you want to see uh, actually? So I found a website. Okay. I think it's called CellMapper.net. Again, we'll put some links in the description. Okay. Um, that show you all of the cell towers near your house. Okay. And you can select your provider, and it shows you your provider. It shows you which direction those antennas are aimed. Right. So the first thing I did was uh, find that, the closest tower to my house. Right. And then I downloaded this uh, uh, little app called Crow's Flight, I believe. Okay. And when you go to cellmapper.net, it gives you an effective address for the cell tower. Okay. I put that address in here. And then you see this little yellow part. Yeah. That's basically aiming right to where that tower is. Okay. So I can just kind of go like this. You go, hey, boom, I'm aimed right at that closest I'm tower. I'm just going to say, right now, you are not pointing the same direction as your antenna. I am not. So the... Uh, the. I mean, you can see that on the video. He's pointing... Yeah, <laughs> to... I'm aiming what? like this away. Right, and the and antennas are clearly the pointing going that 180 away. degrees a different direction. So um, the reason for that delta is... There is a cell tower about three miles that way. Okay. That is aimed in this general area towards us. Right. We're at the extreme edge of its coverage zone. Okay. Now, uh, about a half a mile that way is another cell tower, and it's aimed that way. Okay. But it's only half a mile away. Right. And there's not as many trees and junk in the way. Right. So even though it's so even though it's aimed the other way, my antenna is powerful enough to get the back scatter cast off or whatever of okay. that uh, that tower. So and I basically did that by sitting here uh, on the first day and running speedtest.net 
rotating, like just leaving this guy. It was before I added 200 pounds, so it was a lot easier to move. Right. I basically set my cell phone here, uh, hit speedtest.net, did a speed test, logged the uh, degrees that I was aimed at using crow's flight, and then walked my way all around. Now, it's entirely possible that I can get a better signal by aiming this way. Because I have it set up on this part of the house, this whole range where my house is, basically, I didn't even test. Okay, okay. Like, I could take it out on the hillside over there and probably test 360. Right. So it's entirely it. possible with a little better location, some changes, you get better Correct. results. Okay. I may get better results with a different direction. So let's let's go back in to your desk okay. and let's actually talk about what results you got. Sure. All right, so we're back in here. We looked at your antennas. Yep. You got better than sure. one to two megabits. How much better? So my first few tests, I was coming in right around 65 to 70 megabits per second. Jesus, that is literally 60, 30 to 60% or 12 like, to 15%, yeah, uh, faster. Uh, no, like 100, oh, oh wait, yeah, like, well, like, like, more times like better 12 times increase yeah yeah it's it's, it's yeah. crazy yeah yeah it's, it was huge and i was super excited because uh, i flirted with a little cheap antenna in the past to try and make it better didn't help uh but this antenna setup is the right one it like uh instantly made my uh, internet uh, up to broadband speeds uh which i was super excited about because the biggest drawback to this place actually the only drawback to this place was the crappy internet right so I was excited. I'm like, yay, the world's better. Um, and now I can go treat my internet like I have regular people's internet. Right. Uh, that was my hope. Um, it turned out after doing that, I still had the problem where uh, if my daughter was watching YouTube, everything else was just balls ass slow. Okay. Just really poor. Release. Right. Which, I mean, for most people's experience, they can have multiple YouTube or sure. Netflix streams going at once. Yep. And it's fine. Yeah. I have like up to three going to my house at any given time. Yep. So uh, me being who I am, I thought, well, I need to figure out what's going on here and how to fix this. So I pulled out my edge router light. Uh, I slapped it back into the network. It had just been kind of sitting on the side doing nothing for a number of years now. Um, and I started uh, kind of getting the network back in order and clean and easy and wanted to figure out um, how to set up some traffic shaping. So I went in to the uh, edge routers configuration and I set up uh, smart traffic queuing or whatever. And it, uh, it asked me for what my maximum uploads were and what my maximum downloads were. And for the rest of you, when you buy internet and it's like, hey, it's gonna be you know, 200 megabits down, 20 megabits up, you know those numbers. I didn't know those numbers. So I went and uh, grabbed a couple of Raspberry Pis from the internet. Raspberry Pis are just a little single uh, uh, onboard computer. Right, really small, cheap computer. Yeah, so this guy right here, uh, he's, he's a whole computer. You've got two little HDMI ports, USB-C for power, audio. I can drive two monitors off of this, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Couple of USB ports, USB 3, right. Ethernet. You can't do anything powerful on it. You're not going to be like compiling video or. You're probably not video editing um, on this, correct. But uh, I've been doing an awful lot with it now. Right. Uh, so I got two of these. I set one of them up on my home network. I installed the uh, speed test CLI. It's a command line interface to speedtest.net. Yeah. And uh, it'll run. Uh, a test to see how fast your download is, how fast your upload is, and what your ping times look like. And then runs it reoccurring, well, I assume. Well, I set it up to run reoccurring. Okay. Because I wanted to get reasonable rates for my downloads. So I uh, set one of the Raspberry Pis up uh, inside of my traffic shaping in the network, and one of them outside of the traffic shaping of the network. And I set them each up to run uh, two uh, speed test executions an hour. Okay. Uh, and I staggered them a little bit so that they're not both trying to use the internet at the same time. Okay. So um, you've got data points now every 30 minutes of what your internet speed is. Correct. Okay. Uh, one from inside of my network right. and one from the very, very edge of my network. Right. Um, and the idea here is that the edge of my network is going to be faster because that's a direct connection to my cellular remote. Right. And the inside is going to be whatever I'm seeing with traffic shaping. Okay. So, um, me being me, the next thing I did was like, well, okay, I can have all of this data in text files, but 
I'm, that's just right. that's not going to. So work it's, for it's me. where is it logging that data to now? So on my Raspberry, on one of the Raspberry Pis, I set an, up an Influx database. Influx is basically a time series database uh, that makes it very easy to query things based on time. Right. Um, so I wrote some quick Python scripts to run speed test uh, CLI, grab the data out of it, jam it in an Influx database. And then I went and got uh, Grafana, which is a open source uh, visualization tool. And I started writing some queries. So what we're gonna look at next are the dashboards that I put together. So since Raspberry Pis are um, single onboard computers and they can tend to run hot if you put too much workload on them, I wanted to make sure I knew how hot they were. So I've got uh, three Raspberry Pis right now in the network. I've got speed test, which is the uh, node running outside of my network. Okay. I've got the Unify controller, which is running inside of my network. And as of uh, yesterday, I've got GPI, which I'm going to use to do some home automation with my garage door. Um, so these are the uh, current temperatures for whatever range I'm looking at, like the newest temperatures. Right. Um, and then this next one here shows the trend line for all of them. Uh, there's actually some interesting stuff here you can see, and we're just going to go zoom in. And is that is temperature in Fahrenheit? Uh, Celsius? Celsius. Okay. Yeah. So let's actually. So that's take... a little warm, but it's not. It's not. Yeah. Crazy hot. So, I mean, if we're under 60 degrees Celsius, we're pretty pretty yeah. healthy for electronics. Mostly uh, here we have the Pi is running right around 40 to 45. Right. Um, they start throttling once they get up to 80. Okay. So I'm doing fine. Yep. But there's a couple of interesting things to look at here. Uh, like I said, they get hot if they're doing something. Um, for the speed test and the Unify controller, I have cases with heat sinks and fans in them. And you see these bumps every once in a while, like this guy right here at, uh, what is that, about 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh my goodness, what's it doing at three o'clock in the morning? And then you see another one of those. <laughs> Don't talk to me, Siri. What's Siri doing at that time? Um, you see another hump that looks very similar right. this afternoon. What the hell? Well, since Raspberry Pis um, are uh, cute little devices, I, I also decided to set up some backup scripts. Okay. And what's happening right here is it's actually doing a uh, backup of the entire image to USB. Ah. So it grinds through a bunch of work to make sure it backs up everything currently so I have an easy to restore image. Right. Uh, I was playing with that today on the Unify controller, which is why you see this spike here. And this is just the standard spike for every night backups. Right. But you're still well below the 80% throttling but still limit, well so that's, below all, the throttling that's all good. Limit. Yep. Okay, so here's the interesting part now. Yes. So let's look at the interesting part. So like I said, for my quality of service, I need to know what the right um, speed for downloads is and what the right speed for uploads is. So I went and we'll do seven days because that's mostly correct. Um, I went and uh, got all of my data logging here into the dashboard and I created initially um, download, upload, and ping. So let's actually take a look at the first few days here because these are somewhat interesting while I was uh, getting um, all of this together. Right. And the orange line versus the green line yeah, the orange is the two line, different Correct. The orange line is the speed test. That's the device that's sitting at the very, very edge of my network right next to the router. Yep. Um, so it's faster. And then this green line here, that's uh, the Unify controller, that's my inside my traffic shaping. Okay. Right? So that's where your router, your, your edge router is going in and applying some rules and yep. saying if you like, and trying to be smart about giving how, how much bandwidth to everybody. Correct. So that if one of your daughters is watching YouTube, she's not consuming all of the bandwidth of the network. Exactly. So what you'll see here is that the uh, speed test, as it makes sense, is faster, but it's also super inconsistent. Right. Right. Um, and you'll see here that for the first few days here, I was set at 20 megabits per second, or my I'm pretty consistent right around 20 megabits per second. And then something happens near this blue line. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and then um, it jumps up to, I don't know, about 45 or 35, it looks like. And then it jumps almost to 40. Then it bottoms out and it sticks down here at 10 for, well, a whole day, basically. Uh, and then it, it creeps back up to about 40. Then it drops again. Yeah. So what, what are those dips? So this is interesting. Um, these first dips here, uh, I, I decided since I was setting all this up trying to figure out what's going on, on my network, I uh, started to use some of the features of Grafana that are actually handy. You can actually go and add annotations to any graph very easily. So this first graph here, 
is where I um, had the edge router set to 20 megabits per second is the max because I wanted to stay well under the, uh, the threshold of my internet. That worked really well. So I bumped it up to 40 megabits per second. And then you see an increase in speed here, right? Right. And that's pretty consistent and works pretty well. Um, right here, um, my Mophie got rebooted. My Mophie is what connects my cellular network to my home network, right? Right. And then as soon as my Mophie is rebooted, the network here drops to about 10 megabits per second. But why wouldn't that have dropped your edge route, the, the, your outside, your, your, your tests on the edge? So my tests on the edge are not going through the edge router at all. Right, um, but they're still so going through the Mophie, aren't they? They are going through the Mophie. So this is weird, right? Yeah. Because I have one device connected to the Mophie that's getting, you know, up in the 50s and 60s, and then my supposedly traffic-shaped, pretty nice network is down at 10 uh, megabits per second. So I noticed this early one morning right before work started, and I didn't have time to troubleshoot, so I went to work, worked all day, and then got spent a little time that night. Worked all day with poor internet. Correct, worked all day with poor, <laughs> well, it's 10 megabits per second is still like twice as fast as I had before. Right. Uh, or five. Or five, yeah, like it, it's actually much faster. Uh, so it was okay. So I changed my edge router light to about 20 uh, megabits per second, around 430. That didn't really change anything. So I uh, updated my edge router light to 40 megabits. And this time, instead of using the uh, UI, the, the web UI, I just went and did it in the command line. Uh, I thought maybe there was something weird going on with the web UI that it wasn't committing changes. Uh, I changed it with the, uh, the command line and it got a little better. Like, but not quite right. Um, so what I did then is I uh, adjusted the edge router light to 50 megabits per second and I rebooted it. Now, it seems like extreme, but again, it's a home network. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to have the uptight above corporate networks. And then boom, immediately, it's now cranking away without a problem. Right, until? Until right here at three o'clock in the morning or 2.40. Now, interestingly enough, note this drops at 240. This dropped at 240. Right. So you stopped rebooting the Mophie. Stopped rebooting the Mophie, and you'll see that uh, my problem pretty much went away. I'm now running fairly consistently. These, uh, I actually added this graph over here to help out. This is a, a slightly uh, easier to look at graph, the mean by day. So what I'm doing is just taking the mean of all of the uh, samples throughout that day and putting them on a line right. so it's a little more smooth. So cool. I think the summary for our viewers and listeners, um, you, your, make, your internet throughput yes. went from what it had been for the previous 10 years yes. of one to two megabits per second max. Yep. To forty to I mean I see I've you're pushing up to 60, 70, 70, uh, yeah, right? Sixty and seventy. So that is thirty-five times faster internet. Correct. Just by uh, adding an antenna. Right. So so a first of all, you're saving money because yep. you're 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 spending one hundred and fifty bucks a month yep. with um, unlimited bill, unlimited bill instead of two hundred bucks a month directly through the cell yep. provider. And what did you spend on those antennas? About uh, three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. Right. Yeah. So I'm bringing with. I mean, I wouldn't point my mom or my grandma at, you know, hey, set up a Raspberry Pi device to sure. capture this traffic and do things, but it's not super complex what you've no. done here. There's uh, actually, there's a website called, I want to say Pi Up My Life that has tutorials on it that actually had a bunch of this stuff in it. Um, that was my starting point on most of this and then I uh, adjusted as needed. Yeah. So I think, uh, so you've got... And I just want to give a teaser because we're going to sure. do another, we're going to do another video here in a little bit. Um, you've got a third Raspberry Pi yep. that you said you just got, and I think you're going to do something else with that. Yes. With probably this checkerboard is your garage door. Correct. Is it this garage door or well, the other one in the other bay? It's going to be both garage. Doors. Okay. So um, the next video we'll do is actually setting up this Raspberry Pi here, um, some reed switches, and a relay to control 
uh, my garage door and actually give me a signal of whether or not my garage door is open or closed. Yeah. It's probably not actually the next video we do. I'm probably going to throw one more in there in between okay. in where, the I put, where I do a new PC build, which I haven't done in forever. Nice. But um, the one immediately after that. So we've got, a, we've got a little series. So we've got some teasers, a few things coming of some more Raspberry Pi yep. stuff, some PC builds. Clearly, Zach likes Max, so I'm sure there'll be that's, plenty of Mac stuff a, in here too. Surface, uh, oh, that is, isn't book. it? I've been yeah. I, this whole time. I've been thinking that was a MacBook. Yeah. It is a Surface Book, though, isn't it? Yeah. Is it still blue screen? Hmm? Is it still blue screen? No, it actually is working much better nice. now. Nice. All right. Um, I think that's about it, though. But summary is: if you're in a rural area and you are having internet problems, yep slow internet problems, which is a legitimate problem for lots of people who live in rural areas. There is a solution. There's solutions yep. out there now. Check and see if unlimited bills in your yeah. area. Uh, if needed, grab an antenna to go with it. Again, we'll uh, send some links out because it's uh, changed everything here. Um, the internet's fast. We can watch YouTube and Hulu and uh, Netflix all at the same time. There's no, almost no buffering now. It used to be when I'd go to Netflix, you hit play. Yeah. And then you have time to go get a Coke and come back <laughs> right? and then still wait a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, it's amazing. Awesome. So cool. I'm glad we got this video out. The first tech garage video in ever the first tech garage content yes. in like five years. Exactly. Uh, I think episode 50 is still in the can actually. I think 50 51, 51 somewhere 51. around there. Yeah. Anyway, I got that somewhere. cool. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. See.